Hello, in this video I want to explain the follow function regarding compilers. This will be my fast version of the video. If you need the slower one, just watch the slower one. Also important, we ex in this video I explain without the epsilon. This makes the rules much easier, but also not complete. Keep that in mind if you watch this video. Okay, let's get started. These are the rules. I hope you are familiar with them. These are our first sets. Hope you know why they are like they are, as they are. And to give an answer first, these are our follow sets. And here are our follow rules, written in German, now in English. Okay, so what does the follow function tell us? The follow function tells us which character is the next one of the non-terminal characters. So follow A tells us which character is the next one after A in here. And it is a brace, closing brace. And why do we have a dollar sign? What does that mean? The dollar sign, we should know that means that it's the end of the input. And it's not yet written in the rules, but we already know that we have this very technical state. And we of course know that this is the first state, the A is basically the starting point. So this will also be the finishing point. So we have this very technical state. And we see here in this technical state that a dollar sign is coming. So we have the dollar sign as well. That's it for the first. Let's check out B now. Follow of B, okay, after B, there's nothing, but we know when C and B is successfully reached, then it will transform to an A. So when we ask about follow B, we ask basically about follow A. This is the reason why we have follow A in here. And in this case, when we ask for follow B, we ask for follow B. This is the reason why we have follow B in here. By the way, we're talking about rule number two at the moment. Let's mark that. And then we just write it down. Follow A is exactly that. And follow B is a recursion, so we don't care about it. So we just forget it. Remember, or don't forget, if just imagine there's a plus after B, then in this set, there will also be a plus in here. Because after this B, there comes a plus, And after this B comes the same as after this A. That being said, we can remove that. And keep on going with follow C. What is follow C? Sorry, I forgot that. Follow C is not B, but is the first character in B. So follow C is first B. We're applying rule number one at the moment. So first B, we check it up. Um, it's a plus. It's a plus. That's it. By the way, B was okay. So we finished C. Let's check out D. We have the same case in B. Um, after C, after D, there's nothing. So we care about what comes after D is also what comes after C because A and D, sorry, E and D will be reduced to C. And we check out follow C is a plus. So we have a plus in the set. And in the next rule down here, up here, after D, there's another D. So we have this one over here. It's a recursion, so we don't care about it. So just the plus. By the way, in this case, we used rule two again. Finished with that one. Going to the last one. Follow E is the same case as in follow C. After E comes a non-terminal symbol, the big D. So we ask, what is the first one in D? So we apply rule number one. What's the first one in D? It's this one. So we just have the multiplication here and we're done. I know that I marked the rules, but honestly, I don't care about the rules. I care about what comes next here. This is much easier for me. And just as a side note, this Z over here or Z is just randomly chosen. I just chose the last letter in the alphabet. Okay, that's it. If you have questions or didn't understand things or something is unclear, first watch the longer video. This is my advice to you. And if you still have questions, just put them in the comments and read the video description. Maybe I put some updates in there. Thanks for watching.